Alrighty, here we go with section 4.5, negative exponents, okay? So we've dealt with what they call rational exponents, which are fractions, and we've dealt with a bunch of exponent laws and a few other things as well, and changing from radicals to exponents, and from exponents to radicals, and now we're dealing with these negative exponents, okay? So these have a thing that happens, and it's what we need to understand before we can do these is uh, what a reciprocal is, okay? Now the definition of a reciprocal uh, mathematically is that if you multiply the two numbers, uh, their product is one. So any two numbers that multiply to give you one would be reciprocals of each other. Now, I'm just gonna say flip it here because that might remind you of what you need to do. And I'm gonna show you how to find a reciprocal. So what do you think you can multiply this by to make it one, right? It's so the top and the bottom are the same. So if I want to multiply the top by a number and the bottom by a number to make them the same, well, let's think about flip it. I just told you, flip it. Well, what happens if you flip it? 3 over 2. 2 times 3 is 6. 3 times 2 is 6. Boom. You get 1. 6 over 6 is 1. Sorry, I had a brain fart there. So these are reciprocals. Now, 5 over 7. Flip it. You get 7 over 5. Now, if I multiply these together, I get negative 1. Wait a sec. Oh, look, I have to keep the negative. So one thing that you have to understand is that when you find the reciprocal, you just flip it. You don't change the sign, okay? Don't change the sign. If it's negative, it stays negative. If it's positive, it stays positive. Now, what about the reciprocal for 8? You might not be able to flip it. But think about what you'd have to multiply 8 by to get 1. And 1 eighth of 8 is 1, right? Well, where'd that 1 come from? Oh, look, you can put a 1 underneath there. Not a problem. Now, 1 half times what is 1? Well, 2 halves, right? So 2 times a half is 1. Well, that'd be 2 over 1. Again, we just flipped it. That's what negative exponents do. All right? Now, what we're going to look at here is just a quick definition. x to the power of n, negative n, becomes 1 over x to the power of positive n. Another way that I'd like to write this down, that's not necessarily my favorite, I just realized, right? You could do this as well, 1 over x to the power of n. I think that might be almost a better way to look at this, okay? Because that's going to be 1 to the n, x to the n, and 1 to the n is just 1, so it's x to the n okay on the bottom now this is to show you that it works both ways right if you have a negative exponent on the bottom it becomes positive on the top now hopefully in this section we'll try and figure out how all of that stuff applies i'll give you a bunch of examples and we'll be able to sort it out okay hopefully let's have a look at some of these here okay so three to the power of negative two right we can think of it a couple ways if you find the reciprocal of three which is one third then you can make that exponent positive. And one third squared is one third times one third. If you're going to give that as one squared over three squared, any way you look at it, it's going to end up being one ninth, right? This one, negative three quarters to the power of negative three. In this case, you don't want to go one over this. So the idea is that you just flip those two, okay? Now it's going to be negative four-thirds to the power of positive three. Notice that I didn't change the negative. I just put it out front there. If there's one negative, the whole thing's negative. And now it's going to be look like this. I'll put the negative on the top now. Negative four to the power of three over three to the power of three. That's negative 64 over 27. And boom, there you go. You got your answer. Now this last one here, uh, the example I have, a couple different ways you can look at it. Why don't we get used to using our calculators too? You got 0.3 to the power of negative 4, and you're done, right? It's 123. Okay, well, let's see if we can look at this a little bit differently. 0 0.3 is equal to 3 over 10. So it's 3 over 10 to the power of negative 4. Well, that would be 10 over 3 to the power of positive 4, which is 10 with 4 zeros. 3 to the power of 4 is 81. 
Look at that. So 10,000 over 81, you can actually give me an exact answer. Let's see if that works out. 10,000 divided by 81. Oh my God, Mr. Gregor, look at that. They're the same answer. You're crazy. Yes, I am crazy. Crazy awesome. Anyways, Halloween, what do you expect, right? Let's have a look at another couple of examples. Say I gave you, uh, la, 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 I don't know, six sevenths to the power of negative uh, two. Simple as that, right? So what's going to happen is you're just going to flip that. It's going to become seven over six to the power of positive two, which is 49 over 36. There really isn't that much involved with these uh, negative exponents, okay? It's just a matter of practicing them and doing um, as many as you can and asking questions if you don't get it, right? All that same good stuff. Now, I'm just going to throw you a formula here. A formula, uh, we need to be good at formulas, meaning in physics, in chemistry, in biology, um, and in mathematics, you're going to be given some formulas, like you have already volumes and surface areas. Uh, you're given formulas, and you have to be able to plug numbers in and find for the unknown value, right? So, uh, in this case, you've got a formula that makes no sense to you. This is a formula they devised to figure out how fast a dinosaur was moving. Where the hell they get these numbers from? You know what? I have no idea. You can look it up yourself, but what they did is they came up with a formula. They have these formulas for a lot of different things. They have a formula for the um, figuring out how fast you go when uh, you get in an accident, the police do. And that formula involves the length of the skid, the tread depth of your tire, the type of rubber in your tire, the type of material that the road is made of, whether it's asphalt, what type of asphalt, what the conditions were, what the temperature was, all these different variables. In this case, you have the size of the footprint and the distance between the footprints, and that tells you how fast the dinosaur was moving. So can you plug these values in to get a number, right? If S is 1.5 and F is uh, 0.3, plug those values in. So. So what we can do is now start plugging these numbers in, right? That gives me a value. You can do all these things together. You can multiply that now by uh, 0.155. Um, and now I can multiply that by, let's go 0.3 to the power of negative 7 divided by 6. And what you're going to end up with is 1.24. Now, I don't care how you figure this out, but try and get a number equal to that, 1.24, okay? So I can actually type the whole thing in together if you want on this calculator, pretty fancy calculator. Some of you guys have something similar, and then it's going to be 1.5 to the power of 5 divided by 3, right? And then I have to move it over, I'm going to close that bracket, and then I'm going to multiply it again by 0.3 to the power of, now I put another bracket, negative 7, uh, divided by 6, close that bracket, go over there, close that bracket again, boom, 1.24. You might have to do it in steps. You might have to, uh, I don't know what you're going to do. Just try and figure out how to use your calculator so that you come up with this number. Fractional exponents, negative exponents, they all cause us some grief. you got to keep practicing, folks. Keep plugging away. You'll get it dialed, okay? Any questions, you come talk to me. Have a happy Halloween!